I think the next thing that will go down is part of the repeater network or all of the repeater network. If we look at, you know, what um, what the needs are of the mobile and handheld units, what makes them uh, very um, interstate capable is the repeater network. And as the calamity increases, that you know that repeater network will go down. So, you know be prepared to not have that repeater network available to you. Great if it's there, but be prepared to have a plan in place on how it works. Um, you know, you can reference my other video when it comes to the APRS. I really feel the APRS is a great stabilizing factor. It allows this type of equipment, just, just this equipment, to act as an ad hoc network. Um, if you want to research that, this is the first time you're hearing it. Search ad hoc network and APRS. And, uh, oh, sorry, didn't see you. Anyway, ad hoc network, APRS. Um, next thing, you know, as the calamity increases, your, your available power first, you know, really when really a major emergency happens, first thing that comes down is the power. Uh, you know first major component yeah we can live without the repeater network for you know these type we can we can still talk back and forth between these equipment at pretty good distances um, but without a plan in place to resupply your power the, this stuff's not going to be working uh, next thing that's going to probably go down in this situation are the GPS satellites it, you know th this equipment is not really dependent but it does leverage the GPS satellite constellation and a lot of the functionality that we're used to is you know kind of codependent on that GPS satellite constellation so you know be prepared for that component to go down uh, and I think the last major component in the available infrastructure that's going to go down is your ability to re resupply as components break um, you know I'll be the first to admit I'm not at this level, but I'm trying to get there and, and understanding the the circuitry and making this stuff work out of you know trying to piece this stuff together, uh, scrounge up parts from different places, um, and being able to put these things back together and use them. You know, you, you need to be at if you're truly gonna be prepared to to meet this circumstances you're going to have to have a plan in place for the resupply as well and so when we look at okay so we got the available net infrastructure as a, as the different components break down uh, let's talk about the communication needs in an emergency situation um, you know first off you know we always seen in any calamity the first the first commercial product to go down are the phone lines phone lines and cell phones you know they're not going to go down and so the first component that you're going to need you know you're going to want some interfamily communications you know if the calamity happens while you're at work you know you're going to have you're going to want to communicate to them hey i'm fine where are you you know how can i get to you if they've already evacuated and you're the primary household uh provider and your family's already evacuated a situation why you know why travel 20 to 30 miles back to your house depending on how far away you are why travel back to your house only to find a note that they've left you know so you you're going to need that interfamily communication needs uh and then as we um see a larger uh, as, as the as the you know, as the turd factor is increasing, our needs are increasing. You know, so not only we're going to need interfamily, but we're going to need community-wide communications. Um, you know, we're going to be able, we're going to need uh, communication needs that uh, is allows several thousand people to be on the net at one time. Um, and then we go into emergency management. You know, we talking about you know the utilities the medical the civil protection needs of your community um, all of that takes communication between the inner agencies so 
when you're talking about emergency management, you're going to need to have interagency. You're going to want an ad hoc network so that everybody can be on the net communicating and, and establishing resources and moving resources to where they need to go. And then let's talk about keyboard to keyboard. Um, to me, it's not just key keyboard to keyboard. You know, your needs, let's move over here. I hate showing screenshots, but you know, let's just say this is your community and you're involved in the CERT program and this, you've broken out your, your assigned CERT network and um, as you're, you know, say this area were to get hit by an earthquake, not everybody's going to need the same resources. In fact, there's going to be some components of this neighborhood that were hit harder than others. And there's, you know, really your communication needs are going to be meeting and transferring resources from where you have them to where you need them. And so really your components that you need within inside of an emergency, being able to capture that, um, damage assessment and push it to those who need it. Um, you can't do that prior to the prior to the earthquake or you can't do that prior to the blizzard. You don't know wh where your emergencies are and hopefully you've kind of established where your resources are, but you're not going to, you aren't going to know where your emergencies are and where to, where you need to transfer those resources to. So being able to capture that data in a GIS program, um, this is quantum GIS, so let's, uh, let's mark that so you can reference it. So GIS and look at quantum GIS.org. You know, you're going to want to integrate these into your emergency management plan prior to a calamity. Um, and then, you know, when we start looking at, um, these global calamities, you know, that that's where your mole handheld limit, you know, you're not going to get global purely on these mobile handhelds. It's not going to happen. Um, you know, you're, and then once you get past the, you know, your, your HF radios, you know, they're going to, yeah, they'll get global. Um, but that's about the amateur limit. And I realize there's some gray zone in there. That's why I kind of put it in there, depending on your situation. You may be able to, to push it past into here. Um, but, you know, for the sake of argument, when we talk about an invasion, amateur radio is not going to be the solution for an invasion. Um, frankly put, you know, you're, if you're dealing with an outside force or if you're part of a resistance, if you come up with, you know, basically... Um, single frequency open or you know your open frequency talk you know the hammer is going to come down pretty hard on you you might get away with it here and there you might be able to practice some pretty good opsec and whatnot but you know the the hammer's coming down in an invasion if you're using this equipment so you know really what you know in invasion type scenarios you know you're going to need some military grade Uh, communication needs you know you, you talk about the the embitters the singars you know that's why they control it real well I'm not suggesting you go buy it but just kind of understand the components and in that scenario you can fall in on some of that equipment and use it and use it to your advantage uh, you're gonna need you're definitely gonna want encryption and spread spectrum technology you know definitely has been a huge factor in any type of military operation. Uh, they've been doing that um, since the 70s, 80s, the early 80s. They realized, oh, hey, I show up on a battlefield, and guess what the enemy does? They jam you. <laughs> and uh, if you don't have a spread spectrum technology, their jamming techniques are going to jam you, and you're not going to have communications. And another thing the enemy does is they tend to listen to you. So, uh, anyway, just some thoughts. I uh, wanted to put this uh, turd factor paradox out there for those to see and kind of talk about, you know, the limits of the amateur radio, the benefits of it. Um, you know, I'm definitely, hopefully, 
you're, you know, 17 minutes into this, hopefully I get the, uh, getting across the idea you need amateur radio. You know, you're going to need other things as the calamity increases, but an amateur radio is going to meet the needs, you know, of most of this. That's a lot. You know, for the amount of money that you spend on this, you're going to get a pretty high return and you're going to be pretty set for, you know, a, let's, you know, you're going to get, you're going to get a fair portion of that met by the amateur radio technology. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, hope you kind of enjoyed some of the thoughts, you know, post comments, let me know what you think. Thanks. Bye.